the road to humanity was a long one. It began in Africa some seven million years ago when our lineage split from that of our closest living relatives the chimpanzees. Our ancestors still resembled apes nearly four million years later. Hominins living at this time probably made simple stone tools, but our ancestors didn't really begin to look and behave like us until about two million years ago. Homo erectus fossils have been found in Europe and Asia, marking it as the first hominin to make its way out of Africa. Erectus produced far more sophisticated tools than its predecessors, and was probably the first hominin to control fire. Some researchers believe they invented cooking, providing them with more energy to allow bigger brains to evolve. Populations of Homo heidelbergensis living in Eurasia were thought to have given rise to the Neanderthals in the west and an enigmatic group called the Denisovans in the east, and it was considered to be our direct ancestor too. However, new evidence is completely rewriting this part of the human story. Man began his career as a lowly prey species, gradually progressing in the course of time to the apex of evolution, the super predators, known as Homo sapiens sapiens. According to phylogenic theory, the most recent versions of humans can be grouped into the following, Homo sapiens sapiens, Neanderthals, Denisovans, and Homo antecessor. But there is another group you may not have heard of, called the Neanderthals the ancestor of Denisovans and another group called the Proto-Neanderthals. Interestingly, two of these groups are found in Spain, the Proto-Neanderthals and Homo antecessor. The last common ancestor of Homo sapiens and these groups is unknown, but is probably most closely related to Homo antecessor. You may be a bit confused, so let's clear this up. According to Philogenes, there are actually two distinct lineages of Neanderthals. One split from Homo sapiens around 500,000 years ago, and the other split from Denisovans around 600,000 years ago. This lineage that split from Denisovans, called the Proto-Neanderthals, is known only from fossils found in Spain, and died out or was absorbed into the later Neanderthals group. This begs the question, did the last common ancestor originate in Spain? Most likely, this common ancestor was an offshoot of Homo erectus, which in one of my previous videos you learned is known as Homo sapiens erectus. This phylogenic tree shows the relationship between these groups, which split up around 850,000 years ago. The Asima de los Husos hominin of Spain, previously thought to belong to another ancient human species, known as Homo heidelbergensis. Now, Scientists say that the hominid found at the Spanish site of Sima de los Husos is a proto-Neanderthal. Indeed, an interesting question is how these Middle Stone Age hominins were related to those who lived in the Late Stone Age epoch, in particular to Neanderthals in Western Eurasia and to Denisovans, a sister group of Neanderthals so far known only from a DNA found in a finger bone, a mandible, and a tooth found recently in Laos. Previous analyses of the Sima de los Husos hominins showed that their maternally inherited mitochondrial DNA was distantly related to Denisovans, but not closely related to other Neanderthals. The new results show that the hominins were a more ancient lineage of proto-Neanderthals, but distantly related to other Neanderthals. Scientists recovered nuclear DNA sequences from two specimens, which show that the Spanish proto-Neanderthals were more closely related to Denisovans than to other Neanderthals. This early Neanderthal Denisovan lineage, called the Neanderthals, had big brains, and so of course did their descendants, the Denisovans. The Neanderthals split about 600,000 years ago, into proto-Neanderthals in Europe, and Denisovans in the East. In another study, scientists estimated the date of the Neanderthal Denisovan split at 737,000 years ago, which is remarkably younger than the estimate of 600,000 years by other studies. Furthermore, the Neanderthal population that preceded this split was remarkably small, only about 500 individuals. This supports the previous results, which indicated an early separation of Neanderthals and Denisovans, and an ice age bottleneck among their ancestors. Nonetheless, 
These results provide important anchor points in the timeline of human evolution. They are consistent with a rather early divergence of 800,000 years ago of the modern human lineage from archaic humans, including Neanderthals and Denisovans. It should be noted that there is a discussion in anthropology about replacing the term anatomically modern Homo sapiens with apomorphic Homo sapiens. Apomorphic means having specialized traits that are unique to a group or species, thus showing characters not present in an ancestral form. The opposite of apomorphic is plesiomorphic, having ancestral traits. Anthropologists may use this term for what have previously been called archaic or primitive Homo sapiens. 500,000 years ago, the other Neanderthals split off from Homo sapiens of that period, where they evolved characteristics that would come to define the Neanderthal lineage. Several hundred thousand years after that, modern humans interbred with the Neanderthals, but even then showed signs of reproductive incompatibility. Because of this, modern humans eventually replaced Neanderthals. The degree of divergence between Neanderthals and modern humans over such a short period of time surprised scientists. Why did Neanderthals differentiate so quickly from other early hominins? What pattern of changes did Neanderthals undergo in the process of Neanderthalization? To answer these questions, Scientists have needed an accurate picture of European populations around this time, during the early stages of the Neanderthal lineage and the process of Neanderthalization. This has been challenging, because the European fossil record, an important tool for answering these questions, is isolated and dispersed, consisting of remains from disparate timelines. But samples at the Cima de los Uso site in Atapuerca, Spain are different. What makes this site unique is the extraordinary and unprecedented accumulation of hominin fossils there. Nothing quite so large has ever been discovered for any extinct hominin species, including Neanderthals. This site has been excavated continuously since 1984. After 30 years, archaeologists have recovered nearly 7,000 human fossils corresponding to all skeletal regions of at least 28 individuals. This extraordinary collection includes 17 fragmentary skulls, many of which are very complete. These skulls belong to a single population of a fossil hominin species. Some of them have been studied before, but seven are presented anew, and six are more complete than ever before. With these intact samples at their fingertips, anthropologists made progress characterizing their defining features. The work has helped address hypotheses about Neanderthal evolution, specifically the accretion model hypothesis, which suggests that Neanderthals evolved their defining features at different times, not in a single linear sweep. For decades the nature of the evolutionary process that gave rise to Neanderthals has been discussed. An important question in these debates was whether the Neanderthalization process involved all regions of the skull from the beginning or if there were various stages in this process that affected different parts of the skull at different times. These skull samples showed Neanderthal features present in the face and teeth, but not elsewhere. The nearby brain case, for example, still showed features associated with more primitive hominins. Based on the morphology researchers concluded that these skulls were part of the Neanderthal clade, although not necessarily direct ancestors to the classic Neanderthals. The Proto-Neanderthal of Spain is part of an early European lineage that includes Neanderthals, but is more primitive than the later Pleistocene variety. Critically, many of the Neanderthal-derived features the researchers observed were related to mastication. It seems these modifications had to do with an intensive use of the frontal teeth. The incisors show great wear, as if they had been used as a third hand, typical of Neanderthals. The study suggests that facial modification was the first step in Neanderthal evolution. Indeed, this mosaic pattern fits the prediction of the accretion model. One thing that is surprising about the skulls is how similar the different individuals were. The other fossils of the same geological period are different, and don't fit in the Spanish pattern. This means that there was a lot of diversity among different populations in the Middle Pleistocene. 
In fact, European middle Pleistocene Homo sapiens do not exhibit the suite of Neanderthal-derived features seen in this fossil group. Therefore, more than one evolutionary lineage appears to have coexisted during the European Middle Stone Age, with the Spanish Proto-Neanderthals being more closely related to Denisovans than Homo neanderthalensis. Further phylogenetic analysis also backs up the claim that there were two distinct lineages of Neanderthals. This shows that the Spanish Proto-Neanderthals and the later classic Neanderthals actually diverged 300,000 years apart. The Spanish Proto-Neanderthals split from the line that would give rise to Homo sapiens sapiens and Neanderthals around 800,000 years ago. While Neanderthals and Homo sapiens split 500,000 years ago. These dates differs from the other study discussed in the first part of the video, due to different interpretations of the genetics. We are going to be giving away a t-shirt to a random subscriber this month, so if you find this video compelling, please subscribe, share the video, hit the like button, and leave a comment or suggestion. However, another piece of the puzzle is Homo antecessor, who lived in Spain more than 400,000 years prior to the Proto-Neanderthals. When discovered, Homo antecessor was tentatively proposed as the last common ancestor of Neanderthals and modern humans. In fact, lurking deep in your DNA, you may have a ghostly remnant from this superarchaic proto-human that isn't our ancestor. This is because over half a million years ago, Neandersivans, the common ancestor of proto-Neanderthals and Denisovans, may have intermixed with Homo antecessor, and then in turn mated with archaic Homo sapiens. Scientists demonstrated that Homo antecessor is a close sister lineage to hominins such as modern humans, Neanderthals, and Denisovans. This placement implies that the modern-like face of Homo antecessor may have a considerably deep ancestry in the genus, and that the Neanderthal cranial morphology represents a derived form. The relationships of this species to earlier hominins in Eurasia, such as the Homo erectus specimens from Dmanisi, Georgia, and to later hominins, have been the subject of considerable debate. These issues had remained unresolved due to the fragmentary nature of hominin fossils at other sites, and the failure to recover ancient DNA in Eurasia. Homo antecessor is only known from the Grand Olina assemblage in Atapuerca, Spain. Its relationship with other European Middle Pleistocene fossils is heavily debated. It is still contentious whether Homo antecessor could represent the last common ancestor of Homo sapiens, Neanderthals, and Denisovans, or whether it represents a sister lineage to the last common ancestor of these species. Fossils from northern Algeria in Africa, dated to 700,000 years ago and known as Homo mauritanicus, have also been suggested to be Homo antecessor, based on dental similarities. But how did Homo antecessor cross the Mediterranean? Did they use boats? Anything is possible at this point. Another study showed that the shoulder blades of Homo antecessor and modern humans are nearly identical. Almost one million years ago, our evolution had already attained almost all the biomechanical capacities characterizing the shoulder in modern humans. It had definitively parted ways from the ability still then retained by the more archaic species of the human phylogeny, including climbing with great agility. Thus, the phylogenetic position of Homo antecessor agrees with a divergence of the Homo sapiens, Neanderthal and Denisovan lineages between 500,000 years ago and 800,000 years ago respectively. While Homo antecessor has been dated to 850,000 years ago, the new findings have shown that the Homo antecessor sample population includes some features previously considered autopomorphic Neanderthal features. These results suggest that these features appeared during the early Pleistocene and were retained by Neanderthals and lost by modern humans. The phylogenic results are also consistent with the established presence of Homo erectus in Eurasia, a Eurasian divergence between Homo sapiens and Homo antecessor 850,000 years ago, and an Eurasian divergence among the ancestors of Homo sapiens sapiens 250,000 years ago. Therefore, Homo antecessor does indeed represent a hominin closely related to the last common ancestor of Homo sapiens, Neanderthals and Denisovans, 